How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be talking about a nasty piece of work. This is from December 2019 and is Season 2, Episode 3 of Into the Dark, which is an attempt by Blumhouse Television and Hulu to release a new horror movie every single month. And as I've mentioned before, when there's a major holiday that month, they usually try to tie the movie in. So this will, of course, be a Christmas horror movie. Uh, this is directed by Charles Hood and stars uh, Molly Hagen, Natalie Hall, Kyle Howard, and Dustin Milligan. And this is the, the sixth one I've watched. I've been going through and trying to watch all these, and I started in October around Halloween time. So I watched the two Halloween ones, I watched the two Thanksgiving ones, and now I'm finishing off the Christmas ones. So I've seen six or a quarter of these, and I have to say, so far, this is the worst one. And now, before I get into this, I want to say I'm not one of those angry review YouTubers. I do fair and honest reviews, and I try to break things down and analyze them, but key thing there being honest, whenever something doesn't work, I do have to say it, and this is really, really not a great movie. Um, I guess let's get into the cons. Uh, first off, this is barely horror. And that always bugs me. Whenever you get, like, an anthology show, and it's a horror anthology, and then you get a couple episodes that aren't really horror, but are kind of dark and can fit in a little bit, yeah, this is more on, like, the thriller angle, but even then, not too thrilling. So, yeah, barely a horror movie. I mean, some people get hurt, and some people will die. It's... it's not great. Um... But also, the humor. This movie has tons of humor and satire. Very little, if any, of the humor actually works in this movie. And yeah, it, it kept trying to think it was clever, but I didn't laugh the whole movie. And also, I didn't really care too much for any of the characters. Like, the main guy's wife is okay, but outside of that, they're either caricatures or just uninteresting and flat. And... There's no real characters to get behind and love, so that's out. Uh, but the biggest thing is this is a very boring movie. Very, very boring. And the thing is, too, it's only 77 minutes, so it's really short. And I, I kind of feel that it's ironically the shorter movies I found are it tend to have the highest likelihood to be boring. It's usually they're so short because they didn't have enough and they had to stretch it to get it to even to be that long. But yeah, I kept telling myself as I was trying to get through this movie, it's only 77 minutes. You can do it. We're more than halfway there. But there's nothing like looking at the little time bar on the bottom of the movie, which I did so often throughout this. But looking at the time bar and realizing you're getting closer and closer to that one hour mark and nothing really interesting or big has really happened, you know? I mean, yeah, there's been a few plot points, but nothing that that wowed me. And you keep waiting for the movie to have, like, that shoe that drops that really should be, like, a big inciting incident, and then everything after that is huge. But you're waiting all the movie just for something good to happen. And I, I will say, this movie, if you wanted to re-release it, as like a half hour time block, a good editor could easily chop this thing down to 22 minutes. And really, I think a good editor could probably even get it to 15 minutes. And at 15 minutes, it might be entertaining. But man, this was, oh, that, that, that wasn't good. And um, also, barely a Christmas movie. I, I do have to stress that. When I watch a Christmas movie, I want it to be big and Christmassy. And for whatever reason, you know, this movie is about an evil boss. And evil bosses and misers have kind of become part of Christmas lore. You know, 
uh, you get Scrooge, obviously, biggest and most prominent. The boss on Christmas Vacation, uh, more on that movie in a bit. Also, uh, Mr. Potter as the evil miser from It's a Wonderful Life. So, okay, that's kind of a Christmas theme, but outside of it, it's mainly about promotions and the work, uh, you know, the, the um, competitive industry and jobs and stuff. It's not really Christmassy. The house is dressed up to be Christmassy. The house is decorated. There are lights and stuff. I appreciated that. But outside of that, none of the theme is super Christmassy, and it doesn't really, you know, do Christmas stuff, which I really want for a Christmas movie. So despite the set decorations, this is one of those looser movies. And and watching it and looking back, I can't help but wonder if this was originally rented, written just to be corporate satire. It really does feel like the Christmas element was added in later in order to get it to fit with Into the Dark. I mean, just a theory, I can't prove it, but it really does feel like Christmas was an afterthought, like, hey, this is released in December, before you shoot this thing, add in a couple Christmas stuff. Really, really not the best. And I do want to say, like, this didn't feel good enough to be Blumhouse TV and Hulu. And I know streaming movies aren't necessarily the best, and I know, like, Blumhouse TV, that's not the biggest production studio ever. I know it's not Warner Brothers or Universal, but this didn't even feel like Blumhouse TV. Honestly, this movie felt like Uncorked or ITN. You know those movies that go direct to video at Walmart, but you're probably best hoping you see them at uh, Dollar Tree? This really did feel, just with how little anything actually happens, this really felt like a direct-to-DVD movie. And, yeah, I don't know. It's one that I had to kind of choke down to get to the end, just to, to finish it and wrap it up and be done with it. Not not a great movie. And, and again, again I, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean here. I'm just saying what I feel. Um, I guess... Let's talk about the plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers. I'll be avoiding the end. But I do want to talk a little bit about the plot so that we can analyze this movie further and further see what works and what doesn't. The plot. We open up with this guy and he's running to get his boss's golf clubs because he thinks his boss might want to play golf and he wants to be there for him early before he even knows he wants it. However, he gets the wrong golf clubs and he gets mocked. Why would you buy that? Bring that set. You should have brought the other one. And this leads to an opening credits montage of him smashing the mirror, glass going everywhere. It's like a mirror in the bathroom so people don't see him do it. And it is kind of cool opening. Yeah, mirrors, shards of glass, expression of anger in the corporate world. It thematically fits, but really, if this wasn't a movie, you would be fired right here. And for a guy that takes his job so seriously, I get it's expressing his anger, but it's a really dumb move from a character right at the beginning that's not supposed to make dumb moves like this. I don't know. It looked cool, but didn't work, really. Um, but after that we find out the boss isn't giving out Christmas bonuses this year, and everybody is enraged, obviously. And and don't get me wrong, this would absolutely suck. However, it seems like they don't always do bonuses here, and if the bonus is unreliable, it's best to plan like you're not going to get that. But that being said, people act like the bonus was their whole salary. When they did Christmas Vacation... You got several shots of Clark waiting for the check, and you got, you know, him talking like it was something he got routinely, and you saw that he bought the pool, and in turn, there was a huge financial pressure to get this bonus. There was the setup that made this payoff work. Here, we're just jumping into no bonuses, and then they even say, we thought about giving you a subscription to the Jelly of the Month Club, but we didn't even do that. And that is delivered seriously and straight 
and it's way too big of a, a reference to Christmas Vacation to be delivered that straight, and it is a joke that doesn't work, and oh, I did not like that. But anyway, uh, the boss invites him to a party, says it's going to be a little get-together with some people, and maybe, maybe there'll be something like a Christmas bonus to someone who goes there, you know? So he, his boss is going to get him to go to the party, and the only other people that show up are his rival and his rival's wife. So it's him, his wife, his rival, his rival's wife, his boss, his boss's wife. Six people. Way too few. When I saw that there was the party and there was literally other, only two other guests than your mains, I was like, oh, that's not... That's not enough people to kill. This should be a, a movie where it goes big and extreme and you're like, this party is out of hand. People are dying. But then when the movie shows this card and says, yeah, there's only two other guests. I'm like, oh, we're not doing that. We're not going to get extreme. We're not going to get violent because there's not enough characters in this movie to do so. So that sucks. And it's worth noting there's a bit of really poor direction right when they go into the house. They go into the house and there's this wide shot of the characters in the door. The main guy's wife tries to talk to the lady uh, that's taking her coat, a, a maid character, and the boss says, don't talk to her, just give her your coat. Okay, I get that line, but it's in a wide shot and the characters are like off to the left of the screen and it's, it's not zoomed in on. They didn't do additional shots for this take and in turn it's a good character moment that's literally pushed off to the side uh oh, you needed you needed some some close-ups for that but anyway um they go in and they find out there's a new position and that he's interviewing the two of them in order to see who gets the new position and of course things will go too far and you'll find out, you know, some creepy stuff, there's some backstory, and, you know, there's some kind of horror elements. Yeah, that's a good concept, a sort of what's really going on here interview that goes too far and too dark. But it doesn't really go far enough to make it big over the top and entertaining. Like I said, not enough characters to kill, and there really should have been bigger, more impressive segments in order to really sell like, oh, they're doing all these essentially dares or something. But for the most part, just chit-chat, boring, nothing really great happens. And I do want to say too, it was all about Christmas bonuses, and now it's about this promotion and this new job. I sense a Christmas rewrite here. I think it was probably always supposed to just be about this new position, but they said, we're rewriting it to be a Christmas movie, have it be about Christmas bonuses, then when they go to the party, abruptly shift it to what the script was initially about. I don't know, again, I can't prove it, but it just is super odd that it was all about Christmas bonuses, and now it's all about a promotion. I, I sense a Christmas rewrite. But anyway, with the other characters, one of the biggest problems is the guy who's the competitor. He's a opposer. He will go out and do all the things he thinks he has to do in order to live in this world. Very, very fake. And also, he's too dumb. And this kind of character would be okay if there were more other characters. But to believe that this poser idiot is his biggest competition, I really don't buy it. Like, he is not good enough to be a rival and when the whole movie hinges on your lead versus the other guy yeah no it, it was a big mistake to throw out essentially the only other rival as a joke character and yeah they try some humor with him but overall it was a mistake to do this character like this like i said earlier the wife is like the only okay character She's an outsider to this world. She's kind of got her own life and doing her own thing. And she's trying to understand the world her husband lives in. And she's generally a good person. So the main guy's wife 
she's fine. The main guy, though, oh, he is a, yeah, he, he's, he's boring. He really is. There's nothing super entertaining with him. Later on in the movie, they try to give him some sort of interesting backstory, but he's just a dead fish, and I don't know if it's the actor or if it's the script. It's probably just the script not giving him any real personality. I did not care at all for the main character, and then with the other wives, Rival's wife is a dumb blonde, okay, uh, astrology jokes. And then you have the uh, the boss's wife who is flirting with everybody in front of his face and they fight. And that's, that's fine, they fight, uh, bickering, okay, cool stuff there, I don't know. And then the boss, the boss delivers his lines well, but when you have the boss as the character that's orchestrating this plot, and then the writers don't really do much of a plot, it really hinders his character just because what's he even doing, you know? And yeah, so the boss delivers his lines well and a good voice, but again, character ruined by the script. Uh, there's a few other things, like they go to dinner and, you know, in the house and there's these masks over the dinner table and the mask look cool. Probably the best part of the movie, cool mask. They barely amount to anything. And like these things are in like promo art. I think they're on the thumbnail. And they look cool. They they, they don't do much, sadly. They, they, they do have something later on, but still. Also, there's an element where it appears that someone is in the house watching them. Again, not a great payoff for this either. And it builds to, I won't spoil it, but it builds to an ending that just feels stupid. And, you know, I get that some of the ending was supposed to be a joke, but the humor really doesn't land, and in turn, the whole ending really does come off as pretty stupid. And yeah, the humor doesn't work. There's a lot of this movie that is humorous, and you can feel the movie thinking it's trying to be clever, trying to, to wink and nod at the audience going, hey, look what I did, I did a funny satire, right? Again, never laughed. Like, there's one joke where the boss talks to the guy's rival about global warming, and the rival goes, oh, I don't believe in global warming. And the boss goes, well, I do, and I'm sad because it will ruin the climate, the, the climate for the grapes that I use to make my wine, and what will I do without my wine? Okay, I get what you're going for, that joke. Maybe it was the delivery? I don't know, but I saw that joke and I'm like, I get the setup. Why, why am I not laughing? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, this was one of those movies that I was getting towards the end of it. I started watching it earlier, and I had to pause it and uh, had to convince myself to go back in. And then as I was getting around the hour mark, I was just like, go ahead, finish it, just get it done. Then you can shoot the review, and you can cross this one off the list, and you can move on to the rest of in the Into the Dark. I, I really really wasn't a fan. It was boring. It was, if this was a direct-to-video movie that I had found at the Walmart or Dollar Tree, I would judge it a little more fairly, but this is Hulu. This is Blumhouse. It should have been at least a little better, and, and nah, this this wasn't great. And I hope I didn't complain too much. I, I don't like to complain, but there's not really much I can say positive about this movie. Yeah, the wife was a fun character, I guess. That that's <laughs> and the mask looked cool. That's pretty much it. Uh, this didn't really I I didn't like it. Uh but anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be a Christmas playlist. And if you want to see me talk about the other Blumhouse into the dark, uh Christmas movie, uh, Puka. I do have a review for Puka. 
that one is much better and there's a bunch of other stuff in there as well so if you want to see more Christmas you can click right here to see more Christmas anyway have a good day I'll see you guys again very very soon Christmas playlist on the bottom have a good day now